This is drugs. This is your brain on drugs. There's nothing uh, grown up or sophisticated in taking an LSD trip at all. They're just being complete fools. Who taught you how to do this stuff? You are right. I can see it. I can see all the molecules. Le vrai secret de la magie est que le monde est fait de mots. Et si vous connaissez les mots dont est fait le monde, alors vous pouvez en faire ce que vous voulez. Terence McKenna. Well, you know, and when you were saying that, it just made me think about Terence McKenna. He gives the example of a baby lying in a crib in a room that has an open window, and uh, you know the baby's so I guess it's less than a year old. And there's this amazing, you know, object, and then it's moving around, and it's shape shifting, and it has lots of different colors, and uh, you know, the, the baby's just enthralled. And then the mother says, "Bird," and this whole thing that has all this unlimited potential collapses onto Bird. And so then we go around, and we talk about, "Oh, I saw a bird," blah blah blah, bird, you know, as, as if <laughs> all birds and all expressions of bird are reduced to this one word that. You know, it's become a shorthand, it's like, oh, that's just something that flies around. Ronald Hall, étudiant en licence de philosophie et biochimie à l'Université de Rice à Houston. I guess to start things off, LSD is, in English, it's the abbreviated form of lysergic acid diethylamide 25. And that's because in German, the German word for it is lysergic sour diethylamide. And it was the 25th attempt of Albert Hoffman's to make a chemical. And uh, thanks to that, we have LSD today, which is pretty cool. Um, it's particularly unique among psychedelic compounds. Uh, there are two main classes. You have your phenethylamines, and they activate your dopamine pathways in your brain. They activate the dopamine receptors. Um, whereas shrooms, ayahuasca, which is DMT, and uh, a couple of others are tryptamines, and they activate serotonin pathways, which is why they cause more visual hallucinations, is because your vision is linked in with your serotonin pathways. Uh, LSD does both. It's got a, a really interesting structure, and it, it fits into the receptor sites for both of those. On LSD especially, you feel really up and active because it's activating your dopamine pathways as well as all of the serotonin hallucination stuff, which is pretty cool. Nothing else that we have really does that. There's not been a lot of research done into these things because they're kind of hard to do. They require like really technical equipment and procedures and it's illegal, which makes it, you know, that much harder to deal with. Les drogues, les substances ou produits chimiques sans usage médical reconnu et présentant un haut potentiel addictif sont considérés comme les plus dangereux et sont en tête de nos priorités. Michael Schwartz, diplômé de physique et psychologie, professeur et chercheur en psychologie clinique. You learn a language, you're so brilliant when you're young, and why can't you learn another one? Because you're speaking your language, you're thinking your thoughts. You become a creature of your time and your place, for better or for worse. And you get rigid and you get stuck and you get old. And that happens when you're 30, 20. And it certainly happens when you're 40 and 50. And can you change that? And the wonderful answer is yes. Your brain is set up to adopt you to the world that you're in. However, there's also a conservative principle in your brain, which is expressed through fear, through rigidness, through stubbornness, through an, an unwillingness to explore something. So you got these danger systems. The famous one is called the amygdala. And if I have a trauma, the amygdala in my brain goes off, panic, 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 wrong, 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 mistake, 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 don't go there, don't go there, don't go there. Foreign language, different values, different religion, evil, bad, oh my God. Men and women, different, different, different. 
young and old, different racial, different, different. I mean, all, all, all these things happen when the amygdala goes off and we get stuck. And if the amygdala can be suppressed, and that's part of what happens with psychedelic substances, I'm open to new learning. I think it is shocking that anyone uh, of any authority would today try to uh, make young people believe that they can, with, uh, uh, with no risk to themselves whatsoever, play around with this very dangerous drug. In order to test the effects of an incapacitating drug under field conditions, a simple exercise was devised. Il a été administré à un groupe d'individus une microdose de LSD. Ils ont ensuite participé à un cours de français. Ils nous ont autorisé à filmer et à diffuser les images des résultats. I wrote a paragraph that kind of started off with um, really basic sentences, basic words, basic phrases. I knew that they wouldn't be able to read it correctly, definition and information-wise and pronunciation-wise. However, we just wanted them to do that just to get their baseline level. The flip side of totally losing all connection with reality is microdosing. And so the idea is that you take just a little bit so that you heighten your perception and alter your perception enough that it gives you a new perspective on things that you can learn from. For a short amount of time, you're more receptive to things. When I was dealing with people who were on LSD, they seemed to be a little bit more A, awake and B, engaged. Because it hits both systems at once, it really gets all of your brain going. Because the dopamine system is the reward system. And so things that increase dopamine make you want to do them more. That's how addiction works and that's how learning works. And serotonin has a lot to do with insights and emotional thinking. And so you put the two together and you get like this intrinsic want to think and learn. You know, you try and connect things to what you already know. That's something that I tried to do that during these sessions, like these tutoring sessions, and something that they did themselves. So synaptogenesis is uh, the brain's formation of new synapses. Uh, synapses are the space between neurons uh, where one neuron will release a bunch of chemicals that kind of float across to the next neuron that absorbs the chemicals and then passes the signal on. And so under periods of intense stimulation, new synapses can be formed uh, because there's just so much stimulation. And then afterwards, your sober mind kind of processes it all, puts all the pieces together, and then you can learn a language better. You could get better at math. Uh, the applications of learning are really broad. They would see this word and they'd be like, oh, this kind of looks like this. And so they'd be like, oh my gosh, mind blown reaction. This is where this comes from. And I think that was actually a really good thing because it increases its importance in the terms of memory. You're gonna remember being in that situation and be like, hey, this is connected to this all this time and I never knew that, instead of just, hey, this is just another vocab word that kind of looks like this word. It may be like this, but I'm not really sure. When we were reading the final paragraph with them, they would take the jump and make the connection between words that I didn't necessarily get a chance to go over during the sessions, but they just kind of like figured it out for themselves. You can just kind of see this as like a pilot test, just trying to show that LSD has been proven to increase brain elasticity brain elasticity has been proven to be helpful in learning languages. LSD is just the best thing we have for this. Uh, just kind of making your brain more receptive and increasing your brain's ability to form new internal relations with each other. The misinformation from those who should know better is that uh, it isn't harmful, uh, that it sort of opens up the mind, that it's uh, we would work even seeing some of our young people told it's a worthwhile experiment. Parents who are concerned about your children who are being exposed to LSD and marijuana, there's no doubt about that, and there's nothing you can do about it. My advice is to sit down with your kids and ask them what they're learning, why they take it, and uh, learn from your children, and uh, perhaps uh, eventually, when you're spiritually ready, you'll turn on with your children if you think that's the right thing to do. All hallucinogens can be used to, to, for like, for, like, for educated, educated purposes. purposes. A lot, a lot of, people of people throughout the centuries, centuries have used them for enlightenment, to try to, try to go, on go on vision, vision quests, spirit quests, quest, to, try to try to find out more, more about, about themselves, themselves and the world around them. them. And, and uh, uh, LSD, LSD is synthetic, synthetic which a lot, a lot of people, people have a problem with. A lot of people, their first reaction is like, oh, I'm not comfortable putting that in my body. 
because it's not natural. natural. But, that's but that's really a fallacy. Really a fallacy. Um, there, there are natural, natural things that are, that are terrible, terrible for you. For you. A lot of the worst toxins mankind mankind has ever known are produced by plants. plants. They're completely completely natural. natural. Um, And and there's there's a lot lot of good things. things. I mean, mean, ibuprofen, ibuprofen, aspirin, aspirin, uh, antibiotics, antibiotics, antivirals. Those are all man-made labs. labs. Those aren't aren't natural, natural, but but they're fantastic. fantastic. So just just because because it's synthetic, synthetic, it's not necessarily bad for that reason. Can we facilitate emotional learning? Can we facilitate growth? Can we facilitate intellectual learning? I think these are very reasonable questions worth asking. I'm inclined to think yes. I'm also open to the possibility that the answer is no, but again, we have to do the studies. And are the studies safe? I think the studies are safe. That's what we've learned in the last 10 or 15 years. Maybe that's the answer. Maybe if we all had things that like helped us to better ourselves, I mean, what's what's the harm in that if there is no bodily harm done? Well, I just couldn't. I couldn't possibly tell you. It's, it's here. Can't you feel it? This whole room, this, this, everything is in color, and, and I can feel the air. I can, I can see it. I can see all the molecules. I, I'm, I'm part of it. I, I'm, can't you see it? I'm trying.